Hi, my name is Dr. Philip Uren. I'm one of the principal authors on this study investigating sperm epigenetics and the connection with male factor infertility. And we've just put together this uh, short video today to give you a bit of a run through of what was the main motivation behind our study and the major results that came out of it. So infertility affects around 15% of people and it's a devastating condition uh, that can put a lot of strain on individuals and couples. Uh, but what's often not appreciated is that in 50% of those cases, uh, male factors have a large bearing. And we have very limited understanding of male factor infertility at the moment. And uh, the current standard of care is the semen analysis. And we know that this really is only effective in the most extreme cases. And even when fertilization is possible, we also know that uh, male factors can impact embryogenesis adversely as well. There's now a growing body of evidence showing a link between the epigenetic state of the sperm and male factor infertility. And so really what we wanted to do in this study was a kind of proof of concept where we were looking at being able to predict fertility status and also embryogenesis outcome from DNA methylation. And we're really excited about that because we think if that's possible, then we can make an improvement to the standard of care for uh, patients suffering from male infertility. We collected 127 uh, sperm samples from IVF patients where major female factor infertility had been ruled out and 36 sperm samples from known fertile donors. And of those 127 IVF donors, we know that in 55 cases, uh, those samples resulted in good embryogenesis and in 72 cases, those samples resulted in poor embryogenesis. So we took all of those samples and we profiled them using a luminous uh, 450k human methylation chip and then we just applied a range of uh, machine learning and statistical analysis techniques to try and understand that data and to be able to predict those various outcomes. So we had two main questions that we were trying to answer. The first of those questions was whether we could differentiate between IVF patient samples and known fertile donor samples. And we had pretty good success with this. We were able to learn a model that had 0.82 sensitivity and 0.99 specificity. The second question that we were trying to answer was whether we could differentiate between IVF patient samples that produced good quality embryos and those that produced poor quality embryos. And again, we had pretty good success with that, where we were able to learn a model that had sensitivity of 0.5 and specificity of 0.94. We're really excited about the results from this study. We think that um, these will be really helpful in terms of improving the quality of care uh, for those suffering from male factor infertility. Um, at the moment, only the semen analysis is, uh, is applicable in that case, and we know that it only works in very extreme cases. Uh, there are some limitations with the study, though. We know that uh, patients were sampled from a limited geographical area, and it is a retrospective study. So, Moving forward, we'll be conducting another follow-up study where we'll be sampling patients across North America to validate the results of this publication.